Mr. Adams. High on the hill is a great house. It stands three stories tall and could hold a family of 20. It has eight bedrooms and eight bathrooms. The front parlor has a ceiling 12 feet high, but the windows have been dark for 30 years now. No one has lived in that house since the time of a man named Sam Adams. Sam Adams and his wife moved into the house on the hill many years ago. They both loved the house and they were very happy there. Together, they cared for the house. They painted it and made it beautiful. They planted a lovely garden where colorful flowers grew. Sam Adams and his wife enjoyed every day in their wonderful house on the hill. But one day, Sam Adams found out that his wife had to leave. She was going to visit her mother in a nearby town. She promised to come home as soon as she could. Adams was filled with sadness while his wife was away. He knew it was for only a short time. Still, Sam's days seemed very different without his wife. He tried to do the things he and his wife always did together. He went to a restaurant in town. He ate toast with strawberry jam, just as he always did. Then he went to the library where he read his favorite books. After reading at the library, he always bought a loaf of stale bread from the grocery store. Then he walked down to the park and sat down on the bench next to the duck pond. For hours, he would sit, ripping little pieces of stale bread apart and throwing them into the pond. At sunset, he would walk back up the hill to his beautiful house. One day, the cafe owner didn't see Adams. She thought to herself, that's strange. He must not be hungry. I'm sure I'll see him tomorrow. The librarian didn't see Adams either. She thought to herself, that's strange. He must not want to read today. I'm sure I'll see him tomorrow. The grocer also didn't see Adams. He thought to himself, that's strange. He must not be feeling well. I'm sure I'll see him tomorrow. Three days in a row, Adams didn't come down the hill. The cafe owner, librarian, and grocer were worried for Adams. Together, they marched straight up the hill and pounded on his front door. Mr. Mr. Adams, Adams, they cried. Open, open this, this door. door. We, we haven't, haven't seen you for three, three days. days. They knocked and they knocked until Adams finally opened the door. Go away, he said. I have tried to find happiness. I have woken up every day, gotten dressed, and come down to town. I have visited your cafe and your library and your grocery store, but I am still filled with sorrow. I do not wish to come down from my home. The cafe owner, the librarian, and the grocer looked at each other. They didn't know what to say. Finally, they turned around and went back down the hill. As they left, Sam Adams called after them. It was very kind of you to come up and check on me. I will see you all tomorrow. Good night. He closed his door, and the cafe owner, the librarian, and the grocer disappeared down the hill. 
The next morning, the cafe owner didn't see Adams. She was very worried about him. The librarian didn't see Adams either, nor did the grocer. Once again, all three marched up the hill to Adams' house and knocked on his front door. Adams, we, we know, know you are, are in there. there. Open, Open the, the door. door, they chorused. Mr. Adams opened the door and repeated what he had said before. It was very kind of you to come up and check on me. I am very fine here in my house on the hill. I will see you all tomorrow. Good night. But the cafe owner, librarian, and grocer weren't falling for that trick again. Before Adams could shut the door, the grocer put his foot in the doorway. Adams, we do not want you to be unhappy. What can we do to help you? But Adams merely repeated what he had said before. It was very kind of you to come up and check on me. I will see you all tomorrow. Good night. The next day, the cafe owner didn't see Adams. Neither did the librarian, nor the grocer. Days passed, then weeks. They got together and wondered, oh, what can we do? He doesn't want to come out of his house and he will get sick if he stays inside forever. But we cannot make him come down to see us. They talked about how they could make Adams come out of his house. Then they decided together. If he does not come down to see us, we will just have to go up and see him. The three of them walked up the hill a final time. The owner brought Adam's favorite breakfast, toast and strawberry jam. The librarian brought Adam's favorite book. The grocer brought some fruits, vegetables, and bread. But this time, they were not alone. Sam, Sam Adams, Adams, they said, since you did not come to see us, we have come to see you. And look, we met your wife along the way. Adam smiled and said, Thank you. Discuss. What is the author's purpose of this story? What evidence in the text leads you to this answer? <laughs>